hand. Give the Lord a hand. I pray this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God woke us up this morning. And I would like to give you worship and your praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
know he's good. Some of y'all acting and looking like you don't know that he's been good. Some of y'all looking like and acting like you don't know he's been good. You know what? I can speak for myself. Jesus to be this yeah. all around me. Because every time I wake up, guess who's on my heel? Yeah. The enemy. Yeah. Every time I walk out of my door, guess who wants me to die? The enemy. You don't want me to prosper. You don't want me to have anything. That's why I need Jesus to be the all around me.
your direction. God bless you. Real Steve Lodge, you with us, but man, you should be doing that iron. Yes, sir. Good morning to you, my church family. At this time, we would like to welcome our guests. If this is your first time coming and fellowshipping with us here at the Macedonian Church House, or it's your first time in a long time, we would like to acknowledge you and love on you a little bit. Could you please stand at this time? All of our guests. Amen. 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 God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. On behalf of Senior Pastor Bobby McKenzie. our lovely first lady, Sister Justine McKenzie. And I can't leave out our entire Macedonian church family. Amen. I would like to make you guys a promise. You will not be the same since you decided to come and fellowship with us this morning. Amen. Our pastor makes us a promise. If you show up, you will grow up. Amen. So, just to give you a little bit of warning, we get loud up in here. Everybody can love and touch on one another. So, Macedonia, at this time, would you please stand, greet our guests, and greet one another?
and just hang around. We'll try to do it all over again some other kind of way. Amen. We're glad that you have decided to join us. So those of you who are here in the sanctuary and those of you who are streaming live, please say welcome once again. And thank God for you sharing your time with us in this worship experience. Um, at this time, we'll have our announcements for the week. My sister, Ethelene Harris. Good morning, Nassim. Good morning. In the name of the God of Pastor McKenzie, Sister McKenzie, Minister Jacobs, and congregation. Senior recognition. Senior recognition is Sunday, May 19th. Michael Prince and the Cross uh, 
congregation from Toledo, Ohio. They will be coming in, and uh, we're going to have a great time. And off the heels of that, just so y'all get ready, because it's going to come up kind of quick. We will be going to Toledo on the first Sunday in June. Amen. Amen. We'll be going on the first Sunday in June. Buses running, cars running, uh, everything. everything. We're going to Toledo. All are welcome to go. Amen. We had a great time over there last year, and we are looking for a mighty move of God again this year. But also on the third Sunday, uh, we will be here uh, with the uh, annual Usher's Day, but our very own Mr. Shunday Spicer will be preaching at Leggett Chapel on that same day for their Women's Day. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we just want you to know how versatile our ministry is. That we can do uh, more than one thing at one time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to uh, do something a little different. Well, let me see do this one first. Uh, don't forget about Men's Day and Women's Day. Men's Day, and Women's Day. Men's Day is the second Sunday in August at 11 a.m. And Women's Day is the third Sunday in August, uh, September at 11 a.m. Right. And there's some extra offers we ask of you. We don't ask a lot of those kind of things, but those are kind of standards right there. So for Men's Day, we ask our men if you would be so kind. Uh, to give that day $200 on top of your normal tithes and offering. And ladies on the third Sunday of September, $150 on top of your tithes and offering. Some of y'all just looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> and and you think it's the first time we ever did it. <laughs> Would you believe also in the month of August that me and my wife and my family, we've been here for five years? the applause, but I said that because we've been talking about Women's Day for five years. <laughs> <laughs> so it ain't a, like a new thing. This is what we do every year. And, and so let me always clean it up. Do what you can. Amen. I didn't say do what you want to. I said do what you can. If you can, do it. If you can't, come on anyhow. Do what you can. How come it's so hard sometimes when you think like, let's say a number like 150, 200. I mean, that's a lot of money to get to the church. But you be praying to God to give you like millions. Yeah. If you think about it, you know it makes sense to it. Like, man, God bless me. I mean, I want to I wanna live it up like me. But 150, that's a lot of money. Um, bless the Lord. Um, we have, um, I, I, I normally don't do this, but uh, it came from so far. Uh, Sister Amen's daughter, as I understand it. Uh, would you stand one more time just to make sure we get a chance to acknowledge you? Sister Lisa Amen's daughter. And you are ministering. That's what I just said. You tell me, praise God. Praise God. Welcome home. Welcome home. Amen. 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 I want to do something a little different just to make sure our congregation is aware of the cool, great, amazing things that's going on uh, with some of the members. I know we're going to do the senior recognition on uh, the, the third Sunday, so if you haven't gotten your uh, your forms in, today's the, no, the next week is the deadline, I believe. And so then we'll recognize those seniors on the third Sunday. But we have, uh, I got this note here, uh, Brother Terion Patterson. Uh, he's passed his state licensing exam. And so now he is a licensed airline mechanic. And so we're gotta be proud of Terry Hunt. I, I, I like I 
my life just kind of sucked. Amen. Amen. So this note came to me. Now I'm going to give a note back to the family to tell Tyrion. Now I know he's making some money. Amen. <laughs> Our post office box is 896. <laughs> You can get a check and send it in. You can go on tithing and donate that way. Or he can come on to church and bring it himself. You don't want to work for me. Amen. Praise God for increasing tithes and offerings. So our young people get jobs. Amen. Also, also we had some uh, some other young people that um, uh, got some cool stuff going on. Uh, some of our young people, uh, God is blessing them academically. And I want the community to know that the Macedonia youth, uh, they're not just over here singing in the choir. When they show up in the classroom, they're getting it done. Uh, can see her right now. I got her. Uh, she's in the balcony right now, Miss Aaliyah Johnson. Just stand up and wave at the folks that, yeah, 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 just stand up and She's in the balcony, y'all, when y'all see her down here, y'all give her a hug, because I'm told that she made the honor roll. Honor is a high honor. High. Honor is a high honor. High. High honor. High. High honor. She made high honor. Today is China's 
birthday. I told that Elijah's birthday is today. And Brother Keith's birthday today. Happy birthday, young Elijah and Brother Keith. Do we have any wedding anniversaries in the month of uh, May? Month of May. Wedding anniversary in the month of May. All right, good work for you, huh? All right, we'll try again in June. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Um, we just say thank God for you as we are getting into the uh, the summer. Hopefully, no more snow. Uh, we are now moving into uh, our summer attire, and so we just encourage you to uh, just in your summer attire, but make sure that your summer attire is decent. Decent for church. Your your comfort, your comfort is not necessarily as important Amen. as it is to be decent for church. And so we're asking specifically, um, and, and, and I haven't seen a lot of, of the guys do a lot of stuff, and when that were to happen, then I will address this, but if uh, our ladies, if you would, when you're up front, especially if you're ministering up front, we would ask that you do not have jeans with holes in them. We shouldn't see your eyes and all that. That is probably the fashion, but we would prefer on that day that that's not what you have the front. And we ask that you actually don't have on a top that shows shoulder and a lot of cleavage. And no midwaist. Okay. It is okay to dress differently than you dress somewhere else at church. Because you believe in whether you're a young lady or an older lady, at some point in your life, you're going to be in a position where you're going to need to dress differently than you normally right. do. Amen. And church is a good place to practice. Right. You, there's nothing in this life that I'm aware of that's good that will allow you to do everything you want to do whenever you want to do it. There's nothing that I'm aware of. And so we're not trying to punish you. We're trying to be a great representation of God. So um, be comfortable, but be decent. Is that okay? I'll take you a few more claps. If I'm stepping on it, just clap your hands. I won't know. Let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give. We certainly thank God for each and every one of you. We praise God for uh, your generosity and your love for this ministry and sharing your resources. We know that for some, this is not easy time. As they used to say, money kind of funny. But we certainly uh, appreciate your faithfulness. And know this, we're not a church that's trying to take something from you. We're actually trying to get something to you. I know that some absolutely don't believe that because I see the tithe report. I see some of you, and I know you work. And I see you giving $20 a week, and I know you don't get paid no $200 a week. I already know that. But some of you don't know that I've seen where you work and I've been by there. You just didn't see me. I saw you. Can I just teach this for a second? 
Amen. You ain't doing me or God a favor by Amen. throwing in a little tip of two uh, twenty dollars. When you gonna go and blow the rest of that money Amen. on some God did not tell you to spend it on? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Do it, shit. And so we love you anyhow. Amen. We pray that you'll just try God one time. Amen. Just try it. Try a time. Amen. When you get your check, look at the gross. Amen. And Amen. multiply that gross by 10%. Yes, Whatever that number is, write a check, get your cash, write a money on I don't care how you do it. Throw me some pennies. I don't care. <laughs> just try it. See what happens. Amen. And see if God will not open up the window of And pour you out a blessing. Come on, Doc. Many times we're too busy counting what's leaving our hand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about that. That's a lot of money to get to the church. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, we in lottery lines trying to win millions. Oh. 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 I still actually, if you think about it, don't make sense. No. And I'm not even hating on you because that's where your faith is, that's where your faith is. I ain't hating you. People do the best they can, but I believe this. I believe that God has a blessing bigger and more guaranteed than that. And so, those of you who love this ministry today and have brought your gifts, you don't mind holding the other notes up. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for blessing us with a congregation of people that love this ministry to the point that they will actually give up their resources, give a tithe and an offering on a consistent basis so that lives can be changed, souls can be saved, and needs can be met, not only in this church, but in this community. We thank you, God, that because of their generous heart, Lord, that you are already opening up the windows of heaven. Pour them out of this. You don't have room to receive. So we thank you in advance for trusting us to give back to you. We love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I start getting off all of our preachers, our deacons, our trustees, and you, my sisters, and my brothers. And this time, we please stand face the walls, and us just will direct you from the rear.
verse, verse number 31. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. The book of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And you had to say amen. amen. From the King James Version of the Bible. Yes, sir. It says, But they that wait upon the Lord yes, shall renew their strength. Yes, they shall model with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If you allow me the privilege, I want to preach from the sermon title, A Divine Jump Start. A Divine Jump Start. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A Divine Jump Start. I know it's kind of warm today. So we're going to do the very best we can to get in and get out of this sermon so we can do our communion and get you out of here. Amen. We certainly give honor to God today to this great group of preachers, including our newest preacher. Thank God for all of you who came out to celebrate with us last week as we licensed him to this great music ministry under the direction of Brother Ryan Sims. And these, amen. And these great musicians, Brother Elijah Wilkins. And Brother Jeffrey. To my wife, Ms. Christine McKenzie. And to all of you, my sisters and my brothers, we greet you with Jesus' joy. For the month of May, for the month of May, our focus for preaching and teaching is patience, perseverance, and self control. Patience, perseverance, and self-control. And I want to start this month off by encouraging those of us who for sure right now may be running low or even empty on patience. May be running low or empty on perseverance. Running low or possibly empty on self-control, I want you to be encouraged today that you may need a divine jump start. Last year, last year, uh, my wife and I were here uh, doing premarital counseling on a Friday night, and we wrapped up that session, and we were about to leave, and we got in my car, and my car wouldn't start. We start. Because my battery in my car had drained of power all the way down to empty. It didn't have enough power to start the car. In other words, it was dead. So in order to get the car started, we called AAA. And they sent out a truck and gave us a jump start. I was doing ministry. Where I was supposed to be. Uh-huh. When I was supposed to be there. With who I was supposed to be doing it with. And yet my car needed a jump start. Uh, some of us here today, we're doing the very best we can to do what God would have us to do. We come to church, we give our tithes and our offerings, we pray. We love with the best that we can love with. Uh And yet, we're drained of power. This thing called life, in spite of us doing what we're supposed to be doing, Uh it has drained us physically. It has drained us emotionally. It has drained us mentally. It has drained some of us financially. 
And if we're real transparent today, for some of us, it's drained us spiritually. You find yourself so drained that you can't even jump start yourself. You find yourself feeling like you're stuck. And you're in a holding pattern. And you don't know really what to do. The reality is, maybe you need a divine jump start. A divine jump start is when a believer is worn down, drained, discouraged, depressed, and despondent due to the demands of life and or ministry, and they need God to renew that believer's power, passion, provision, and purpose. Let me say it one more time. A divine jumpstart uh-huh. is when a believer has been worn down, yeah. Yeah. drained, yeah. discouraged, yeah. depressed, and despondent yeah. due to the demands of life and our ministry yeah. and need God to renew yeah. their power, yeah. their passion, yeah. their provisions, and their purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. of us, if not all of us, at some point in this Christian journey, have found ourselves needed a divine justice. Am I in the right house? <laughs> if that's you today, it doesn't really matter what has drained your battery. It could be your spouse. It could be your job. It could be your sisters. It could be your brothers. It could be your children. It could be your mama. It could be your daddy. As a matter of fact, it can be you. If you have found yourself in a position where your battery, your spiritual battery is dead, you actually need a divine jump start, but I want to encourage you, you're actually in good company. Because I can identify a few people in the Bible who actually needed a divine jump start too. Job needed a divine jump start in Job chapter 1 where the Bible says he had a day. He had a day when he lost his wealth, he lost his children, and he lost his health all in the same day. And he had this jump start need because he said... In spite of what I've been through, all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change time. He got his jump shot. We see in uh, the Bible where even uh, Jesus Christ himself needed a jump shot. Because in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Lord, our Father, if it be thy will, okay. let this cup pass from me. Yes, then all of a sudden he got his jump on. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes, Every now and again, we need a jump start, and we're not the only ones who ever needed a jump start. Yes, I want to let somebody know it's okay. Yes, and perhaps it's normal yes, for you to need a jump start. Yes, what does that mean? It just means you human. Give yourself permission every now and again just to be human. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves that we will almost kill ourselves trying to figure out why we don't have it going on in this area or that area. I want you to know that you ain't the only one that needed a jump start, and all it means, Josh, is that you human, man. You are not immune to this thing called life. It's cool if you are in that position. It's just not cool if you stay in that position. When my car had a dead battery, I called AAA. If your spiritual battery is dead today, I need you to call Triple C. Christ the Father, Christ the Son, Christ the Holy Ghost, Triple C. 
call God. So then, just for a few minutes, and I'm going to try to get out of here as quick as I can. I want to give you three benefits of a divine jump start. Three benefits of a divine jump start. Jump start. All obviously in verse number 31. The first benefit of a divine jump start is that a divine jump start it gives you the promise of renewed power. It gives you the promise of renewed power. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Watch this. The scripture says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It didn't say maybe. It did say possibly. It said shall. You're already asking me though, how do you wait on the Lord? I'm so glad you asked. To wait on the Lord is a decision. Listen at the preaching and teaching topic. It's a decision to be patient. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a decision to be patient with God uh-huh. as you are serving Him. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. You willfully and intentionally make a decision that I am going to wait on the Lord no matter how long He takes to do what He has for me to do. I'm not going to get impatient and throw in the towel before God move in my situation. I got frustrated on Thursday and now it's Friday. I'm ready to throw in the towel. It's way too early to throw in the towel. I ain't going to wait patiently by my decision to wait and serve God. Watch this. It speaks to self-control and discipline to grow your faith in God as you wait for it. How many of us actually grow while we're waiting on God? Or do you get frustrated while you're waiting on it? Listen, this thing called the Christian life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Listen, I'm just going to speak on his behalf because I think I'm, I can speak uh, candidly for him. I see Dr. Curtis is here. Yeah. Dr. Curtis recently yeah. turned 97 years old. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Dr. Curtis couldn't actually ask for a 97 year old blessing at age 5. Yeah. You missed it. Dr. Curtis couldn't handle at five years old what he can handle at 97. So he had to actually receive the promise of renewed strength for five years old and go ahead and try to get the six. He had to receive the promise of a six-year-old to try to get the seven. Am I making sense already? to renew your strength where you are before you try to get to somewhere else. But most of us are trying to get somewhere and if we get there, we can't even stay. Lord, have mercy be. It says, you will renew your strength. This thing called life has a way of draining you. Listen, if you give enough time, if you give enough opportunity, and you get enough people in your life, there's a high possibility that you're going to get drained. You give enough time, enough opportunity, and enough people, there's a high probability you're going to get tired. You're going to get weakened by the experience. You're going to want to give up. You're going to want to give in. But I'm here to tell you that that's when you need your divine jump start. Because God who says, so he said, if you just wait on me, I'll renew your 
strength. I'll give you power. In other words, I'll give you power to handle just one more time, one more thing. Many times, we feel, we'll say this, and y'all know I, I've already told y'all don't say this. You, we'll say this. Uh, they got on my last nerve. Now you the only one knows your last nerve. How you gonna let somebody get on your last nerve? But if you wait on the Lord, so what that means, I'm patiently waiting while I'm doing what God has called me to do. So if you simply keep doing what God would have you to do. Now the problem is, some of y'all don't want to do what God would have you to do in the first place. I understand church. I've been in church for about two days. And I clearly understand that some of y'all get wore out just coming to church. How do I know? Because some of y'all so sleepy right now. And you are blaming on me. Because you stayed up to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Like I was the one that kept you up. You don't blame it on me because you were sitting there watching a movie all night long. You don't blame it on me because you were the one up drinking and smoking. You don't blame it on me because Saturday night is your time. Y'all like that old song about who did it? The freaks come out at night. I didn't take you out. Can you imagine a time when you was just feeling weak and warm? And God gave you renewed power to love somebody like you're supposed to love. Can you imagine when God gave you power to be excited again about ministry just like he was when you first got saved? Can you imagine a time when God gave you power to allow you to be uh, the blessed person that you always thought that you were supposed to be? Amen. He said he will renew your strength yeah. if you wait on him. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Point number two. Uh, uh-huh. Not only is there a promise, there's a, a, a promise of new, new power. There you go. Promise of renewed power. There's also a picture of a better perspective. Picture of a better perspective. Watch this. Sometimes we actually move at an altitude too low for stuff not to jump on us and drain us. The scripture says this. It says, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. We get bogged down in life because we're flying too low. And we need a divine jump start to get us higher. Um, Some stuff that some of us are dealing with, you shouldn't even waste your time dealing with it. There's some of us that are regularly dealing with some junk, and the more we touch that junk, it drains our battery. And the only reason you are touching the junk, you're flying too low. But if you get your divine jump start, you will mount up on wings as eagles. Perspective. Watch this. What do you see when 
when you look in the mirror at yourself, do you see an eagle or do you see a chicken? What do you see? You need to be able to see yourself soaring above your problems. Stop us. All right. All right. We took off. Yes, sir. 
and we flew oh, yeah. over a lot of situations that should have taken us out. Watch this. The process of perseverance, though, it says life started happening to you. I got married, thought I was going to live happily ever after, and figured out I was in pure hell. And my dream became my nightmare. I was flying on wedding day with Lord Jesus. But I'm still saved. And all I need to get past this situation that has stopped me from flying is I need a divine jump start. But my jump start don't allow me now to fly no more. But it keeps me running. Because the scripture says they shall run and not be weary. I hear the old saints who've been on the battlefield a long time, who can't actually fly like they used to. You were able to sing that song of being ready for Jesus a long time. And I'm not. Life happened to you again. And it messed around and stopped you in your tracks. Life has a way of showing up just when you don't want it to. Just when you don't think you need it. It'll stop you in your tracks. And though it got real hard, find where you ain't able to run like you used to. But you still want to persevere. You have told yourself, I can't fly like I used to. I can't run now like I used to. Then the Bible says that they shall walk and not faint. If you can't fly, get you a jump start to run. If you can't run no more. Get you a jump start to walk about talking to anybody up in the air. Pick it back, pick it back. Would you please come up here? Would you please bring your cane? Would you please come up here? That was a time when this man bring your cane. Bring it, that your cane. Break this, come on, come on, break all your feet, break all your feet. That was a time when this man was flying all over town, all over Albion. He done moved to the point that he had to run, but now he has to he ain't moving too fast. But I'm so glad that he's moving and he's still walking. He got a divine jump start. Sister Bart, Sister Bart, can you please come up? Can you, can you please somebody get a walk, get a walk? Somebody please come up. There was a time when Sister Bart, I think her name used to be Sister Word. I think, you see, she had to be a Word woman. Her last name was Word. She heard the Word of God. She used to fly. But life started happening to her. She didn't see as well as she used to. Now she started running. But then, her eyesight got a little worse. I got a little gallstone in a gallbladder. But I hear her say, I ain't going to be able to fly no more.
got what I call two hits. One in the sanctuary today. And one that you obviously know. That was a time when a young man was an athlete. Just played basketball. Worked hard. Fly. Could never touch him. But life happened to him. And he got grounded. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he decided I can't fly. But I'll get my divine jump start. And I'll at least run. Then life happened to him. They messed around and cut both. Toe toes off both feet. And he came and run like he used to. But I want you to know. That a divine jump song will allow him to walk. It will allow him to walk. Some of you ain't got nothing wrong with your feet. This is your man that has no toes. But God gave him a divine jump song. Raised him up on his feet. And he made him a promise. He said, You will walk. And you won't faint. Lord, have mercy. Lord, I'll tell you about one more witness. His name is Jesus. He got a divine jump shot one day. So the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that he said, Oh, you can help with that prayer, but have everlasting life. So this is this Jesus that I'm talking about. He got a divine jump start because he came down through 42 generations. He was born of a virgin named Mary. He spent for 33 and a half years on this earth. He got a divine jump start because he healed the sick. He gave life to the blind. He raised the dead. He got a divine jump start. A one of the final and healed all that family. And put nails in his hands. And put nails in his feet. And they hung him high. They stretched him high. They dropped him low. He got a divine jump start.
soul person. If that's you, no matter what your denomination is, because the last time I checked, I ain't heard nobody tell me what denomination Jesus was. So, you're welcome to join us. We're going to do this quickly and expeditiously as possible. But we thank, thank God for you.
you a man. Somebody tell me you love them. 